Hey there, greetings, Dr. Marzano. Uh, I apologize if this is really loud for some reason when I record here, and I, I guess I have a booming voice, but whenever I record, it always shows up uh, really loud in my in my playback, so I hope I didn't just blow your ears off. Uh, this is my uh, this is my level one course one, uh, task one C video reflection activity, and I have both of these up on screen because I just want to make sure that I'm um, covering everything. Um, I'll try and try and not ramble on for too long and uh, not get too crazy, but I just want to start off by uh, by saying just that I'm, I'm excited about this this experience going through this with you uh, and being able to reflect and uh, build upon who I am as a teacher. And you know, I was I was figure there's a billion things that I can be doing better. And so uh, I look forward if I could just cross some of those off the list, you know, and every little step is, is one step that's going to be more beneficial to my students in my classroom. And so I uh, just to really appreciate this process. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, to begin with, uh, you know, I, I really do like this new model. Uh, Brian showed it to me the other day. And to me, it, it just it seems a little more cohesive and seems to to fit easier with with the the model that we have here and to, with the competency based classroom. I mean, as I'm planning, I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to go through and and check check a lot of these boxes. Um, and not to say that the you know the NASOT was was bad, obviously, um, but it's it was maybe a little more scattered as far as uh, as far as how these fit with our model. And so uh, I, I when when Brian showed it to me and I knew that I had to, to do an instructional model, I really wanted to choose this one. And so, uh, so here it is. Uh, so as I wrote yesterday, I was last, last night, um, as I wrote about uh, the playlist that I'm currently on in the unit that we're currently doing, and I'm gonna show it up here on the screen, is the uh, Monster Goldfish unit within Empower. And everything I do is usually within within Empower just because I, I really like, I wanna make this bigger. I really like that, you know, it shows, um, shows the students everything that they need and uh, let, lets them progress at their own pace. And it also is a great place for me to store resources and, and put everything in here. So you'll see that I use Empower pretty quite heavily. Um, so this is the current the current playlist. I designed this playlist around um, around three different learning targets, uh, three different proficiency scales. Um, I know them and my students know them as R101, R102, and R104. And uh, I sent you copies of those learning targets as well. Um, Within each one, so so when I when I go to plan, generally I'm I'm planning and building within the playlist, and um, and so this is kind of how I can I guess walk through uh, all of the things. So the first one is proficiency scales, and um, my proficiency scales are hidden in in each of these subfolders. I have my uh, I have my proficiency scale here for the kids, and I put these in student-friendly language so that they can understand them and they can go through them. They keep these in their data notebooks, and uh, you know it, it breaks it down with the content, and it has uh, the, the indicator and, and ratings on the back so students self, self-assess and reflect. And um, so there's one of these each for uh, questioning and inferencing and interpretation um, for levels uh, four and five. There's one for main idea supporting details as far as four and five. And then um, there's one that's uh, making connections and, and finding relationships, which is a level five learning target. And uh, just explaining what a text says, which is a level four learning target. So uh, within this, I built it around those. I built it around those because of two reasons. One, um, you know, it's it's kind of those are some, some, like I said, bread and butter learning targets for these kids and something that's going to help them as they go forward for the rest of the year. You know, um, I want them making inferences. I want them uh, understanding main ideas, right. And, uh, and everything else. So to me, they, they build. Um, and then the other reason was that, you know, it's, it's one that my students needed um, using the target browser on a power is able to see that this is one that my students need. So uh, to me that uh, coupled with the fact that I'm really wanting to make sure that um, as we're doing this, this unit that my students are all working on different learning targets that based upon their interests and needs. So uh, I needed something that was uh, feasible and tangible for the students to be able to wrap their minds around. Nothing that was, you know, going to be uh, ultra complex as this is for most of my students, except for the kids that I had last year. Uh, most of my students, this is something very brand new for them to work at their own pace and, and set their own goals. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like we're about a month in and this is a good time to start uh, with the, with the, you know, the self self system of learning and, and, and the students working at their own pace. So um, that was the reason why I chose uh, these proficiency scales. So uh, assessment and feedback throughout this one um, will be 
me, uh, you know, grading, uh, number one, I guess we'll be grading these activities that the students do in turn in. Um, within each one of these ones, there's a, a couple of activities that are um, specific to a uh, to an article. There's some close reading questions in here to get students to inference and use um, use quotations and refer back to the text. There's um, there's there's some empower quizzes in here based upon a few articles. Uh, for each one of these activities, I've labeled the maximum achievable score for the students so that they're aware of what, what they can get. Um, for ones like this that's on the screen here, these are all close reading questions, close reading questions, and close reading questions for each one of these articles. There's one called Toys or Treasures, Invasion of the Jellyfish, and uh, Ice History and Ice Cream for All. These are all, I really like scholastic story works. I really like the quality of the writing and, and the engagement of the articles. And these are all paired texts. So there's two texts involved in each one of these articles. Um, and then, um, as far as as far as other forms of assessment go, I'm using something called Quiz Is. Uh, you might have heard of Kahoot. Uh, either way, there there's just online quiz programs that kids can do. There's one-on-one uh, -on -one conferences with me where I'll fill in anecdotal evidence and, and observations there. Um, as I'm going around the room, I have I have a clipboard that I keep track of students with and, and check things off that way. And um, you know, so multiple forms of assessment and feedback. Uh, as far as it goes to the other kinds of feedback that I'd like to give throughout this. This, this unit is peer, peer feedback and peer assessment, making sure that they are um, running everything through each other before they send it to me, um, especially with their writing. But um, even with the concepts, you know, they're, they're very quick and eager to show the teacher. And I, I want them to try and show, did you show that to somebody else and ask what their, their opinions and thoughts are? So um, not, not that I'm kind of the final line of defense, but I want them to, to start using their resources a little bit better. and. Uh, and, and reflecting that way. So um, so that's that's kind of that piece, the assessment and uh, feedback piece. Um, um, let's yeah, let's move on to the next one. I, I, I hope this isn't gonna go too long. I don't wanna bore you. Uh, proficiency scale instruction. That's that's uh, the bread and butter of the instruction, right? Um, because I'm doing three different, less, uh, three different le uh, uh, learning targets as well as two different levels. It's, got, it's all small group instruction. Um, we have, uh, and I put, for every instruction lesson that I give, the small group instruction, I always put class notes. So I'll take a screenshot of whatever it was that we just talked about. So this one here, uh, you can see is is, uh, is is nice. This was an article here about um, uh, Galveston hurricane of 19, oh my gosh, way back in the early days of 1900s. And uh, it, it was a hurricane that destroyed. It was America's greatest, greatest disaster. I destroyed a lot of Galveston. And so, um, we talked about the supporting details, so we, we analyzed you know each one, each section, uh, and, and analyzed it and had the students come up with uh, with what the supporting detail is of, of each one of those, or main idea of each section, and then used each section um, to this. I've been using, Bob, your, your argumentation map to come up with main idea supporting details, and it might be because it relates to the uh, tree map that we had as a thinking map, but I, I, I'm not sure if there's, you can help me out with this, if there's a better uh, knowledge map to use for, for main idea and supporting details. To me, it kind of fits nicely with the main idea on top and the supporting details down below. Anyway, so um, so these are the lessons that we're doing. It's, it's usually going over a text, having students, having discussion, answering questions about the, the specifics, um, going through the, the indicators, the level indicators. So, you know, I'll say this is a 2.0 lesson. If you need this one, come on up. If you're not, you're good to go. Um, I'm basing all that upon need, upon student need, and where, where they're at with their evidence on the specific learning target that they're in. Um, and so that's that's kind of my uh, my proficiency scale instruction. Um, you know, I think I told you that all students have those proficiency scales, and they're inside their data notebooks, and they are taking a look at those. And, um, and yeah. Okay. Uh, number four, general instruction. Like I said, uh, and I've been trying to wrap my mind around this general instruction one. I'm imagining or, or assuming that this is really all about ones that uh, that don't have proficiency scales tied to them. Um, you know, there always is instruction that is that is. Uh, uh oh, I have to stop in 28 seconds. Okay. Well, that's nice. I'm gonna have to split this up into separate videos, uh, Dr. Marzano. So uh, we will pick back up on general instruction. I have a. Uh, I have a screen casting uh, program, but they took it off my computer. I have to get it reinstalled. So I'll shoot you the link to the second video. This is part one, here comes part two.